patreon.com slash the walkoff podcast uh four dollars a month gets you in there we are so excited to have returning to the show pitcher for the toronto blue jays organization hag and danner haggy d welcome back to the walkoff buddy thanks so much for taking the time thanks for having me man it's always fun on here yeah, we're excited to catch up with you again. And to start with, congrats on getting healthy, man. I know that uh, last off se- or last season, I should say, was a bit of an ups and down one. But uh, good to see you back on the field and ready to roll. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's uh, lightly spoken of. You know, I it was the whole year I was sitting in the rehab room. So yeah, that was not doing fun. Was that the uh, longest, most substantial kind of rehab of your career so far? Oh yeah. The longest one before that was maybe three weeks to a month. Jeez, so, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you, can you give us a little bit of a, a peek behind the curtain, what it's like during a lengthy rehab? Like, were you in Florida at the, at the complex the whole time? Did you have a regimen and timetable right out of the gate or was it a lot of wait and see what, what, how did that play out? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I first went to, I got my second opinion in Dallas. So I went straight to Dallas Texas to go meet with uh, Meister and when he told me I wasn't getting surgery that was the best news I was like okay sweet no surgery and then he said he told me no throw for six weeks and I was like all right well usually whatever you don't throw for you double that for your throwing program so I started doing the math and I was like okay that probably adds up to like four months I was like I was like sweet that's gonna suck but then I get there and I mean, things are going smoothly at first. And then I got on the mound through a couple of bullpens and my arm flared up again and that I took more time off. And so I ended up being about like six and a half months, probably. Mentally, um, that had to have been a tough one, eh? When you got back on the mound and realized, shit, this is not done yet. Right. Yeah, no. It, I, and the sad thing was to me, it was like, it felt so good. And then it was randomly like one bullpen where it flared up again. And I was like, no way, man, that's definitely not what I wanted, but this was your shoulder, right? Elbow. Elbow. Okay. Elbow. Yep. Yeah. Avoiding surgery though. In the end, this is good news, right? Yeah. 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 In the end, it's good news. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but I'm just going to, it, the, the way I thought about it is that I'm just going to keep giving it my all every day. And I mean, I can't, I can only control the controllables. So what's the rehab like, like, are you with other guys and were there other dudes there while you're going through it? Yeah. Yeah. It, we had a, we had quite a bunch. We had probably like 15 guys um, hanging out there. It's very repetitive. That's what I learned. I mean, you get in, you get go in at like 8 AM every day and you leave around 12 or one o'clock it's like the most repetitive days and you really don't have anything to do so it was and then you're in you're in midsummer in florida so you're just dying of heat (laughs) so you really just you really just sit inside there's a couple times where i felt myself maybe getting a little depressed there and and staying in my apartment at all times and just had to find i had one of my buddies in town so he he uh, stayed with me for the whole the whole rehab which was awesome Buddy, it's so funny. We were uh, talking to Chris Beck on Monday and yeah. uh, you wound up coming up and I don't even know how it wound up coming up, but the weather in Florida came up and he was talking yeah. about you and he's like, oh yeah, you give Haggy D a second. He can't wait to throw in your face that California's weather is way better. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. All the time. <laughs> Did you, um like, you did get healthy in time to compete in the Arizona Fall League, which is you know, something, I guess, if there's a, if there's a light at the end of the tunnel, at least right. it was that outside of your first game too, you were absolutely dominant. You didn't allow yes. a run the entire time. Yeah. Um, despite that though, did you feel rusty? Like what was there rust? Yeah. So, I mean, I tried, there was at the first, first outing or two, I did feel a little bit of rust more. So just like the jitters of like having the hitter in there and the, just making sure I don't overthrow because I was, you know, you, I want to blow up the hitter, you know, I want to throw it as hard yeah. as I can. Kind of. But uh, I mean, to me, I got my, my mind was ready because we did take a little extra time because once I realized I was going to be out for so long, I kind of put in my head like, hey, if I don't go back to season, I think I'm going to do the Arizona Fall League. Like I was thinking I would be a perfect candidate for it. So I was kind of in my head. I was just going to be an Arizona Fall League guy. So got my mind right for that. When I got there, it was first outing was a little little rough but I mean after that I settled in 
how are you used in Arizona? Was it all about just getting some innings in you or were they, were there leverage situations they were trying to get you into? How did that all play out? Yeah. So to start, it was kind of just giving me a clean inning because it was my first, my first uh, innings after rehab. But uh, after that, it was, I mean, I was on a schedule. I would throw and then I'd have two days off um, and then I'd throw again. And it was only one inning. I'd go maximum one inning. Um, but towards the end, it was, I was coming in seventh, eighth or ninth inning, which was awesome. I'm, I'm really curious at a scenario where you were in, where you missed that whole season. And then you come back in the Arizona fall league. Did you just shut down again after that? Like, I, cause I know you're in like a yearly routine, right? So right. were you, were you throwing in the off season? Uh, yeah. So I took about only a week off <laughs> and then I just, I mean, I started playing catch again and I mean, I feel great. So that was, I, I'm glad I didn't take too much time off. I really just, if I would have taken too much time off, I think I would have kind of set myself back a little bit, but yeah, I've kind of stayed on top of it. And I mean, I'm ready to go. I'll probably throw, start throwing live ABs next week. So that'll be exciting. What are your goals for spring training? I know you just mentioned that in the Arizona fall league, it was one clean inning. That's it. Moving forward, I'm guessing higher leverage situations is what you're after and maybe the yeah. ability to go four outs if you can, or, or or what are your goals? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, man, my goals are whatever the Blue Chase want me to do. I don't <laughs> love that. I don't really have, yeah, I don't, I don't really have a specific thing. I, I want to, my goal is to try to, if not crack the, crack the, roster out of spring training it's uh to show them that I really I can do it and I'm healthy you know it's not just to go in there and you know have fun it's I'm, I'm going there because <laughs> I, I I mean business is here you know I'm not going there just to show face so I love that I love that not just going there to have fun although let's be serious you are a seasoned vet within this this organization some people don't even know right like you were drafted in 2017 as a catcher yeah and I know we we talked about this last time you were on the show about your transition into pitching but if you go up and down this organization dude you know almost everybody like literally almost everyone we bring on this show if your name comes up they've got some sort of story to tell about yeah. you are you are you excited about spring training it's got to feel almost like a class reunion at, like yeah and honestly every year i it's always like that week heading into spring training i'm like okay well i'm about, i'm gonna miss home a little bit but then like a couple days before i'm like you know what man spring training is the best time of the year i get to see everyone <laughs> i've been waiting to see all year and people i didn't play in the in the past year with in minor league so like you I mean you get to see all those guys it's fun i see you guys have jano on today so yeah that's awesome he's someone that that helped me a lot through the uh catching he couldn't make he I couldn't make it out. as a pitcher though he had to stick to catching he had to stick to catching i think he's all right <laughs> at it. <laughs> yeah he gets by <laughs> i think i think he's just fine uh is it kind of i mean obviously you can't look too far ahead right but yeah. you've come a long way there's got to be a little bit of validation and just even hearing from the scouts and from the pundits that you look ready to make that next jump. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, there's nothing to say. I, I try not to look at like what other of people course. say, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I personally, I do feel ready. I feel ready. Um, I have come a long way mentally, physically, um, and just trying to like, have have the game be a positive aspect in my life and that that's how it's it's starting to become and it's I mean I said try not to just go out there for fun but like me going out there competing that is so much fun so it's it's I mean I you'll see me smile in spring training probably a ton and it's, I mean it's the best time oh you're back out there on the field why wouldn't it's you best. right it's the best <laughs> It's funny how stuff like that puts it in perspective, eh? Because when you're in the grind and you're just, your your head's down and you're focused, it's easy to forget about stuff like health matters. Right. You know, like. Right. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie, buddy. Uh, this Bison's bullpen to start this year. And I mean, knock on wood, fingers crossed. We're hoping that, you know, you make the jump right out of spring, but just in case you don't, right? This Bison's bullpen is going to be pretty dang deadly to start this season. And I, it's funny because last year there was all this talk from the analysts, the pundits, right? The Blue Jays lack velocity in the minor leagues, but frick, you look at that bullpen's 
the Bison's bullpen now. And, you know, like you've got that junior and Julian Fernandez and Zulueta and big Nate's there and you and you all five of you hit triple digits. Like there is velo there. So I'm curious when they're, you're around another flamethrower. Is it like, is it like seeing someone on the road that you're driving the same car of? Like, are you like, Hey, there you go. Like <laughs> we've uh, got a brotherhood here. <laughs> I, that's kind of a funny way to explain it. Um, no, it's more so like, it's always, you, you play games with each other. You know, it's like, you uh usually you find one of those guys to be your catch partner so you guys I mean and your catch partner is going to be your boy for the for the whole season you know you're not going to stop talking to him he's 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 going to be one of your best friends and you know and like guys like that I mean I I hope Nate cracks the club out of spring training yeah he looked so good and he that kid worked his butt off in rehab so I mean I I hope he gets back up there and that's he's he's a great guy to be around um I would say yeah, I mean, there's what do we got? Yeah, five guys about that throw. I mean, Hayden Yanger is in there too. That right, kid, yeah. That kid throws upper 90s too. And he's a young boy. He 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 rose up there. He's a good kid too. Um I hate well, so about six guys throwing upper 90s, you know. And you really can only do your best. And hopefully they see something out of you they that they like. And if instead if they want to bring someone else up, that's who they're gonna bring up. You can't really just yeah. sit there and fight it. So no, you you can't uh you can't make those decisions for sure. It, it's interesting. I know for in stand-up comedy, uh, I know both Adam and I, I've told you before we're comedians. And one yeah. of the things, one of the things that always blows my mind is when a comic is doing something that I couldn't do, you know, whatever joke they're doing, whatever it is, like one liners are not my style. And man, when I watch a guy go up there with 200 one liners and, and yeah. put in a 20 minute set and I'm just like, wow, is it the same with pitching? Like, are there guys that are just doing things you can't do that you're like, holy crap. And if so, do you got some names? Um, well, there's one, <laughs> yeah, Adrian Hernandez okay yeah that kid is a clown i absolutely <laughs> love him and he's the best he doesn't speak too much english but he uh, he works on it every day he's always trying and uh but there i have never seen a change up in my entire life like that kid throws one it moves like a left-handed curveball uh, really? really it moves down like this and it i mean it's crazy and he 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 laughed one time. He gave up a home run out to throwing his fastball and he laughed at me when he came in. And usually like someone gives up a home run, you're not just like gonna laugh. He laughed at me and says, Bobby, that's why I don't throw fastball. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've seen him way too many times. 3-0, he'll throw a change up, change up, change up, strike a guy out on 3-0, go get to 3-2, change up, strike him out. I mean, that's a guy that I I wish somehow I could do throw a changeup like that, but I just don't think it's possible because he has the best changeup I think in the minor leagues, if not the big leagues, the whole baseball. That is so interesting. I wonder how much extra value is added with having a bunch of guys in the pen with him that are fireballers, and then all of a sudden you right. got this guy who's just giving you such a different look. Right, right, and Iser too, Brandon Iser. Yep, that kid can pitch as well. He, I mean, he spots up. He throws. He throws the hardest 91, 92 I have ever seen in my life. He gets whiffs out of that all the time, and it's awesome to watch. But it's coming so, in after guys like that makes it makes the your inning feel a little bit easier. It's so interesting how there's just dudes who, for whatever whatever it is, the spin or the angle of their arm or whatever it is, like you said, 91, 92, but it just feels like it's on you. Like, unreal. It's, it's yeah it's definitely the spin on he throws the fastball with like some vertical break on it what i don't even it just looks like it's rising on you eh? oh yeah i mean it's it's a balloon it rises up on you where are you at with your pitches actually adam go ahead and jump in here i know you no, have something to say. i was before. just gonna say a stupid uh anecdote from my childhood i used to play on the nes nintendo uh rbi baseball and oh, yeah. i would always play with the astros and I'd have Nolan Ryan as a relief pitcher because I would just, I would go with anybody else as my starting pitcher and just drain them. So they were throwing the slowest stuff by the fifth and sixth <laughs> inning. And then Nolan Ryan comes in throwing 101 
and it's like <laughs> three times too fast that no one could catch up. So he was a great closer for me coming in with in real life up. too. Yeah. yeah. In real life. Yeah. <laughs> he did. All right. Uh, Peggy, are there, uh, are there guys in the organization that you're spending time with in the off season or are there buds that you're going out of your way to, to spend time with in non-baseball scenarios outside of golf, obviously. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see in our org. I, there's no one, I, I'm living in Huntington Beach right now, and there is, there is nobody out here in California, really. That, right. Uh, and, but I, last, I'd say last year, uh, Trevor Schwecky flew out from Wisconsin mm-hmm. because he, he was tired of the cold and wanted to get some golf in. He flew all the way out <laughs> to California, stayed with me, and we hung out for a while. But, uh, uh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm always calling people, you know, I always miss, miss the boys. So, yeah. It's, it's a lot of love. There's uh Phil Clark, love that kid. Um, Fitz Stadler, he's he's been grinding in rehab right now. He's when he comes back, he also throws a hundred too. So I mean, there's another wow. guy. Yep. Yeah, Fitz is great. I know he came on the show and just uh, what's the best way of describing? Like how humble and um approachable he is for a six nine dude is so cool. Like he's he, just he like, is elf. He is elf. He, he is elf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is, he is elf. Yeah. It's okay. Have you have you been to the city of Toronto or you're you're holding off? I've never been. <laughs> never been. I'd love to go though. Well, is it, soon is enough, it, I'm sure. Is it like once you were drafted into the Jays organization, was there any temptation to be like, yeah, let's go get familiar with the city, or is it more of a you know, I don't know how much you follow hockey, but like, there's the superstition about not touching the Stanley Cup until you've earned it. Yeah, is there so something was, there with Toronto where you're like, no, 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 I'll get called to Toronto one day. I'll earn that the, flight to Toronto. The guy, so the man who drafted me, Joe Aversa, he's our area scout here in California, and I was always seeing guys sign at their their big league stadium, and they're always the top round guys that were signing, and when I when they did invite me to go to Toronto, I was a little upset. I was like, man, I don't, what's the reasoning for this? And I texted him and I was like, Hey man, I see that Nate Pearson and Logan Warmoth are going, why, why am I not invited? You know? And he goes, he said something about them being college guys. And they like to do that with, with the top college guys, not the high schoolers. And I was like, kind of upset. And he, and he said something to me, he said, Hey man, you don't want to ruin the the beautiful city before you get there the big leagues. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll, I'll stick to that. So that's kind of what I've gone by. Awesome. I love that. Okay. So I, I want to talk pitching a second here with you because you're going to be called on in the bullpen to come out and get strikeouts. And I'm really curious if your mentality changes. So let's say one out guy on third and you're, you're coming in for the K. Do you approach that differently than let's say you're just trying to get an out? No, I attack his ass. Attack him either way. eh? Yeah. Yeah. There's Love nothing it. changes. I throw my, I mean, whoever's catching me, whether it's Kirk, um, Jano. I mean, even we just got a, uh, it was a big trade. We got Varsho. 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 Yeah. yeah he, there you he, go. He'll yeah. Get, he'll get back there too. That's a, he's a good bat, man. That's going to be a good bat. Yeah. Isn't he? Um, I, you really kind of just trust the catcher in those situations. You throw to your strengths. The catcher knows your strengths and you kind of just try to overpower them. You throw, you throw your nasty shit at them. So. This is going to be an interesting year because I know that they just announced that in triple a, it is going to be robo lumps every game all year long. I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. And I'm also curious if this will affect guys like yourself who might wind up, you know, starting in triple a and then getting called up to the bigs and then you've got options you might go back down and come back up like with dealing with two different strike zones is that tough it i did it in the fall league we had it in the fall league um it i actually liked it i enjoyed it they uh i i it puts a little aspect or it shows the fan it puts the fans in the game a little bit it gets them in there they they show when when the hitter does one of these or pitcher catcher gives them gives the umpire one of those, the the whole stadium looks at the scoreboard because it shows it in slow mo the ball coming over and see if it crosses the the line of the strike zone. 
And I mean, with, with the fans there, it was awesome. Everyone was laughing. It was a good time. But I mean, there are some times where you hate it because you think you made the best pitch of your life and somehow it's just not in the zone, you know? Were there any but, calls specifically you remember that were just like way off? Like he called it a yeah. strike and it was like, or he called it a ball and it was like dead. Th- there was a, <laughs> the catcher got crossed up. It, the guy threw a curveball instead of a fastball. Catcher caught it horribly. And the umpire called it a ball. And the catcher, like, st- stood there for a second and just, like, looked back and gave him one of these. The ball was right down the middle. <laughs> right in the middle square. That's got to be good for the crowd. It was hilarious. That, so right? everyone, oh, the umpire yeah. even laughed at it. Was like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then then so there's you... one that there's a, there's a ball about, I would say, four balls above the strike zone and call up our call it a strike challenge ball. And it was like, dude, are you kidding me? That someone even the umpire thought in his head, Hey, that's a strike. I don't, I mean, umpire, it's a hard, hard thing to do. Umpire, that's not easy, but man, that was pretty bad. With going to the show. So let's say you're in triple a, you're pitching to robot umps. You've got that strike zone down. You come up, and now it's ump to ump. But I guess you've got the experience to do that anyway, so it's probably not that big of a deal. Yeah, I mean, it. my... Probably a little adjustment. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, even that that big league strike zone is going to be a little shoebox anyway. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you got to... It, it'll honestly help you. I think it will help, guys, because the automated strike zone is... I mean, it's small. It's a, it's a small box, smaller than you used to. And I mean, it's the big league strike zone. You get to the big leagues, that's going to be the strike zone. So, and those umpires don't miss much, man. They, they're usually missing by yeah. little tiny inches. Yeah. Take it a hard left turn here. Who's got the best fashion style in the organization? Name some of the best dressed teammates you have. Well, I, I have to mention this guy because if he watches this and I don't mention him, he'll be uh, <laughs> Phil, Phil Clark. Not that he's okay, the best, Phil. Yeah, not that he's the best dressed. He's honestly, he wears the same thing to the field every single day, and he th- <laughs> and he thinks it's he thinks it's awesome. Um, What's I, he showing up in every day? Sweats and <laughs> like just like the most nonchalant <laughs> outfit. <laughs> um, but i would say gosh and he's it's sad because he's not in the org anymore but andrew vasquez okay he was the big hawaiian t-shirt guy he i mean he made a statement in spring training he had he brought uh seven hawaiian shirts <laughs> and he'd wear one for every single day of the week. <laughs> his monday through sunday <laughs> yep every Amazing. day um I'm trying to think. You know what, man? I'm trying to be the best dressed this year. I was going to say, you've got a good style, man. I love the – there's not a lot of dudes who could pull off the full brim hat. You, you like your that. hat, Your hat it's game on point, here. buddy. Oh, there. there she is. There's the beauty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, also, I'm, I have a uh, custom one coming as well for me to bring. Nice. This so, yeah. Yep. I'll start wearing the hats, you know, the Cam Newton look. <laughs> <laughs> you've been to probably every minor league stadium out there do you you have a favorite lansing michigan really yeah Uh, by far what was it that what that you enjoyed about lansing so much they i mean it was a stadium you know some stadiums you play and they're not stadiums and lansing was you had the big apartments out in the outfield kind of just and i mean you had people watching the games from their balcony it was really cool and then um the frats and the and the sororities from michigan state they showed up and i mean dude at one point i had beer poured on my back from (laughs) from the fan and i i mean they got kicked out but like that to me i was like bro this is awesome that's an experience (laughs) yeah this is awesome i mean we we I set a record there for a low A game with like 12,300 people or something. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that That's was nuts. that was the best. Just the people are coming out, eh? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's all Michigan State people. They all come out for yeah. the games because, I mean, we did Thirsty Thursdays. It's a dollar beer. 
So why not come out? <laughs> okay. We are going to now do a little game here. So what we're going to do is we're going to name some things. Okay. And you are going to rank those things. One being you absolutely can't stand it. Ten being you are just a huge fan. Okay. I know it's a, it's, it's a tough scoring system, but I think you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. Okay. So let's start with mashed potatoes and gravy. That is a eight. An eight. Okay. So we've got a fan here. Yeah. Classic rock. Ten. Okay. I'm a classic rock guy. I like, you've got the look. What's, oh, what's, yeah. what, what do you like to listen to? What are uh, your favorite classic rock groups? Um, well, I mean, they're, you name them all from like the nineties and the two thousand. I like, I'm actually a two thousands classic rock guy. And I, I feel like people didn't really listen to it too much, but I mean, even like the, not metal, I wouldn't say metal, but like Eve six. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice one. I was a huge Eve six fan. Yeah. <laughs> I love Eve six. Um, I don't know, man. I, it's, I got them all in a playlist Eve too. six, Eve six, second album underrated, underrated, right? Underrated. That first one got all the love, but the second one was a darn good album. <laughs> the first one is freaking awesome. Oh, I still I mean, listen to it. Yeah. Oh, me too, to buddy. It. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, superhero girl. Frick. I oh, anyways. <laughs> okay. So if we're if we're talking about rock in the 2000s, I know people are going to throw questions on the comment section. Where do you stand on Nickelback? Love them. Love, love them. Great love answer. Them. Love so them. easy to hate on Nickelback, and I, no I, one I wants to acknowledge why. that they're really a good band, man. I like don't so know many why hits. People hate on them. That's it's because be like they some... got too big. It happened right? with everything, right? As soon as somebody I, beca- rises up, they can't wait to hate. knock them down. All yeah, hate. it's all I hate. Swear, yeah, yeah. love the answer. I don't know where that came from because all I did was honestly listen to Nickelback on my little iPad or iPod Nano growing up. Yeah. And that was I would and people were like, why are you listen to that? I'm like, dude, that's freaking <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, oh, they man. got some bangers, man. Leader of men. I remember listening to that to the point where my mom, like I was still in high school at the time, but my mom was like, You have to listen to that outside because I can't <laughs> handle it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. The city of Seattle. Four. I <laughs> love it. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, sopranos. Get d- deeper with it for me. What, like, uh, explain exactly a soprano? Like, is that like a. Sorry, like the a, show. The show. The show, The Sopranos. Never watched it. Never watched. Okay. Is that That's zero? I know I wouldn't say that's bad. I mean, it's an older show. You're just okay, showing okay. how young and hip you are, okay. Haggy. Okay. Haggy, <laughs> Scott, last week we, we asked Chris Beck his feelings on Friends. He had never seen the show Friends. And then Scott has been uh, roasted ever since Chris. for being the oldest person ever. For, have you seen <laughs> Friends? Oh, Friends is on the tv this is what i told him i'm like dude you spend so much time in hotel rooms how the hell have you not seen a rerun of like up at like you're randomly up at like 1 a.m and you're just like your friend isn't on you know what yeah oh that's all right that's on chris that one's on chris all right okay i like to hear that thank you scott okay ipa or hoppy beers in general I would say if you asked me this like a year or two ago i would put them up there like a eight nine yeah um but i i'm a little i'm on the light beer trend right now so yeah what 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 do you like to drink i'm like a pilsner just like a crispy or a blonde a nice blonde i like blonde so me too you're uh so we're we're up in uh edmonton and calgary alberta which is the prairies here and oh yeah yeah this is you're gonna fit right in the the prairies (laughs) we love our pilsners yeah (laughs) perfect Are okay, you a Flames next, fan or an I, fan? I'm a Flames fan, and yeah. Adam is a, a Montreal Canadiens fan. Well, so okay, I've Canadian. been in Edmonton for a few years now. My daughter yeah. is 11. She plays hockey. Of course, all her friends are Oilers fans. Yeah, We go to Oilers games, I have to say. Man, they're so I'm an, good. I'm an Oilers them? fan at this point. So, yeah. Begrudgingly, so I'm an Oilers fan. <laughs> 
I am not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Roger Clemens. Ten. Love it. Yeah, I don't care what they say he did. I mean, that guy did a lot for uh, the game of pitching. You know, that guy is. And he would come in when his kid, Casey, played with us. He would be at the field, at the complex all the time, talking with people. He's a, he's a great human. I know that he's a polarizing individual, but honestly, like what he did coming from the Red Sox to the Blue Jays in the 90s, like, because the, like, I was just a kid, right? So the Jays won the World Series in 92 and 93. And I was, I was 10 and 11 when that happened, which really skewed my view on sports, Haggy, because I, as an 11 year old boy, I just thought you follow your favorite team and every couple of years they win the whole thing, right? And here we are 30 years later. Still waiting. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but when when Roger came over in 97 and 98 like the Blue Jays were in a rough spot man and like he came in and even though they were still a bad team he won the Cy Young in 97 and 98 they were a great team and he won the Cy Young like it was just so fun to watch as a kid I, I don't know like everyone gets on the whole steroid thing but it's both hitters and pitchers were juicing like at the same time you know yeah the fact that he was doing this against juicing hitters you yeah. yeah. Agreed. Okay. All right. Roger Last Clemens, great pitcher, better dad. That's what we're saying. Yeah, there you go. Like okay. it, yes. Okay. Last one, and then we're going to get to some listener questions here for you, Haggy, and we'll let you get out of here. Of course, we always appreciate your generosity. Oh, with yeah, no man. rush, so- man. All I got to do is play catch with my buddy Hans Kraus with the Phillies. He's coming over here in a second. But- Hans Kraus, that's a great Bond villain name. You tell him that. Hans Kraus. All right, I will. <laughs> okay, it. last one. Star Wars. Um, I give it an eight. Okay. I I I like it. I I think it's awesome. Um, and if I gave it anything less, all my friends would hate me for that. So, <laughs> so I uh, a little I bit of safety in this number. Yeah, yeah a little safety in there, but. My, my brother's a big fan. I get brought in by Nick Prado with the Royals. He, he that guy is a Star Wars nerd. Yeah. So, can we go to well, Disneyland just to go see the Star Wars world? So we were talking to Chris Beck. He said, I mean, he gave it a 10 and he told us he was going to call his first son Anakin. So I was like, <laughs> oh, he does. He does love Star Wars. That guy he loves, does Star, love Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> um, Han Solo or Han Solo? Han. Han. Okay. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Adam, take over here, bud. Let's get to some listener questions. All right. Uh, first off the top, this one comes from me. So since the Jays traded away Randall Grichik, I've had a hard time getting my wife to watch Blue Jays games. I think it's the lack of hot guy on the team. So anyway, suffice to say, my wife is rooting for you to break camp with the team. <laughs> She says it'll be awesome. nice to have a quote unquote hot guy on the team again. Sweet. So. Hey, but we did get the hottest guy in uh in baseball, so so safe yes. from the from the chicks. Yes. Kier Kier Kevin Kiermeyer. Kiermeyer, oh, handsome Kiermeyer, guy. Man. I don't think Kevin she's Hunk. seen pictures of Kiermeyer yet, so we'll see. Adam's You're Adam's hiding trouble. those from her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not letting her see the pictures of Kiermeyer yet. All right. Okay, uh, next one comes in from Brennan Delaney. He says, how is your hair and mustache always on point? You know, I use, uh, it's funny, I, I wash my hair probably like two to three times a week. Um, conditioner, my girlfriend makes me get all the expensive stuff that she says for some reason are better. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, and then oil, I do oil treatments. Okay. And then the mustache, it just... I don't do shit for it. You know, it just sits there. And, I mean, the mustache, collects, I just grow. Yeah. It collects food and drinks and, you know, and then I just wash it. Do you ever do weird mustaches? You do like the Fu Manchu or like a curly handlebar thing? I can. I've tried the, I've done the curly before and it's just too much to maintain. Yeah. Yeah. All so right. like, I like, I like, I like not having to do anything. I'm just yeah. waking up and my mustache is how it is. Love it. Um. All right. Weird question for you here. This comes from Dulce Marist. Uh, wants us to ask you if you have plans for when you pass. Like uh, afterlife. Are you a burial you know guy? What? A uh, cremation guy? I haven't even thought about it yet. Probably but, a good idea. Yeah, right? it's probably yeah, for the best. I haven't thought about it yet. I always don't like the thought of 
being stuck underground, you know? Yeah. Like even thinking about that is so creepy. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, but I, to me, it's like whoever, like if my family wants to remember me in this little jar or if they want to throw me in the ocean or whatever they want to do, I'm I'm kind of, I mean, I'm going to be dead, you know? You're like, I'm dead. So whatever's (laughs) fine. (laughs) I'm not going to get out of yet. As long as you're uh, immortalized with a bust in Cooperstown, who really cares what happens? There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dakota wants to know, just wondering if you bring your golf clubs with you when you travel, and if there's any away series in particular that you uh, circle on the calendar, specifically because of the golf course they have in town. Um, yeah, I mean, I do bring my golf clubs with me. Uh, not Not on every road trip, I'd say. Definitely every place i go to I'll, I'll bring my clubs but the little road trips i go on um i mean i'm always looking forward to boston i want to play tbc boston um and then i mean man those the like in chicago there's some sweet golf courses over there i know every time if we if we come play if i'm within the big leagues and we play the angels i'm gonna be bringing my golf clubs with me out here i mean i <laughs> can't get enough of these golf courses so Love it. Who's your uh, favorite guys to golf with? I would say my favorite is Hans Kraus with the Phillies, but yeah. with the, with the Blue Jays, it, we always have a group. It's uh, me, Trevor Schwecky, Phil Clark. And I mean, whoever else we usually like uh, Davis, whatever Schneider. you, whoever you can round up on a four, four, fourth. Yeah. <laughs> Davis Schneider, the sneakiest of all sneaky guys, man. Nice. Yeah. We had Davis on uh, recently too. And the go. Uh, what a what a great guy yeah absolutely rooting for him too yeah yes always all right if phil clark is showing up to the field in sweatpants every day does he at least put on something proper for the golf course does he at least respect the golf course he's got a golf attire (laughs) i think i think he takes golf more seriously than than how he dresses for the field okay perfect that's all i needed to know thank you phil um okay last one comes in from cody says hey hagan big fan of yours i've been watching the compound podcast hosted by ian hap uh wants to know when will there be a haggy d podcast for me to follow i gotta say (laughs) became a massive fan of yours the first time on the walk off here you have so much charisma my dude maybe you could collab with scott and adam on it so hey here you go right now (laughs) i'm here right now yeah that's awesome if he's watching this thank you for that um but you know what? I, I probably wouldn't ever make my own podcast. I say that now until I'm super bored after baseball, you know? I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, <laughs> but, but at the same time, I think I enjoy being on podcasts. I like being asked questions more than mm-hmm. having to ask people questions. So yeah, fair enough. Well, that's all we've got. Well, you're welcome today, on. So. You're welcome here. Anytime, my man, we always Sweet. enjoy ta- chatting Sweet. baseball with you, buddy. It's oh, yeah. always a blast. Yeah. I should have time in spring training too. So if we can maybe even set up another one for spring training. That would be awesome. We'll hold We're you to take that. You up on that. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, my friend. Honestly, it was really good catching up and we're so glad to see you healthy and ready to produce this year, buddy. We're, we're rooting for you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate you guys.